So most people familiar with the Jack the Ripper case will know of Sir Charles Warren as the commissioner of the Metropolitan Police who failed to catch the killer. What they might not be familiar with was what he was doing before he was hunting the Ripper and how those activities feed into a conspiracy theory that persists to this day. For as well as a storied military career, Sir Charles Warren was also one of the first archaeologists to excavate the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. In particular, Warren uncovered a series of tunnels underneath the site which is sacred in Islam, Judaism and Christianity alike. Tunnels were dug by relic-hunting Knights Templar who took possession of the site in 1120. There are several rumours about what the Templars might have discovered in the ruins of Solomon's Temple, including the Ark of the Covenant and even the Holy Grail. What is known for sure is that the Templars, whose full name is the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, became fabulously wealthy and powerful throughout the Holy Land until their disillusion in 1312. So did Sir Charles Warren find anything else in those tunnels he excavated centuries later, and why would that be significant to the Jack the Ripper case? To answer that one has to look at the disillusion of the Knights Templar, going from one of the most powerful forces in Christendom, second only to the Pope, to being cast out as heretics and burned at the stake. The Knights Templar held significant power across Europe and built signature churches like the Temple Church in London here. But ultimately their good fortune was to run out. At dawn on Friday the 13th of October 1307, King Philip IV of France ordered Jacques de Molay, the Templar's Grand Master, and scores of other French Templars to be simultaneously arrested. There were charges of heresy including idol worship and the suggestion that the Templars were worshipping a Baphomet or the mummified head of John the Baptist. There are also suggestions of homosexual acts and spitting on the cross. Jacques de Molay himself was burned at the stake in March 1314 on charges of heresy. But did the Templar order really end with the immolation of Jacques de Molay? There are some who believe that they survived, especially in England and Scotland, where they were said to have continued their rituals at places like the Royston Cave in Hertfordshire, which has graffiti consistent with Templar iconography. Ultimately, many believe the Templars gave rise to modern Freemasonry, and it is here that Sir Charles Warren enters the story once again. In common with many members of the Victorian establishment, Warren was a prominent Freemason. And there is a long-standing theory that the Ripper murders were a ritualistic reenactment of the allegorical murder of King Solomon's chief architect, Hiram Abiff, by a fanatical Freemason. This theory could gain currency in the actions of Charles Warren when faced with the so-called Galston Street Graffito, a chalk message close to a piece of bloodied apron which read, The Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing. Warren ordered the message to be washed off, thereby erasing evidence. Ostensibly, he was seeking to avoid inflaming the already fever pitch racial tensions in the impoverished East End, which had a large Jewish immigrant population. But did he see something in the message that only a Freemason could see? And did he know more about the killings? Warren's failure to apprehend the Ripper ultimately cost him his job, and he resigned under a hail of criticism and a cloud as he had gone public and written an article about police processes without the approval of the Home Office. His resignation came the night before the murder of Mary Kelly, the last canonical victim of Jack the Ripper, on the 9th of November 1888. So, Sir Charles Warren, hero or villain? Let me know in the comments below what you think, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.